So hello and welcome back. Today we're going to continue with our acrylic painting techniques and we are going to learn how to mix tints, shades, and complementary pairs in this video. In our last lesson we discussed the color wheel and I only gave you the primary colors yellow, blue, and red and I asked you to mix up everything else here. If you haven't done this yet in my class, please don't try this one. Go back and do that color wheel. Because today we're gonna to introduce two more colors. We have white and black paint here for our tints and shades. For this lesson, you will need this worksheet either linked below or in my classroom. You will also need access to paints. We are just using the primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, as well as black and white, like I said. You will need a paintbrush, a palette knife, a pencil, to write your name, a piece of palette paper, or something to mix your paints on, water, and paper towels. So go ahead and pause this video, set yourself up, and then continue on with me. I'm going to expect that you're ready to go right now. The first thing I want you to do is to go ahead and write your name on your paper and your period that you're in here with me, and then we can get rid of that pencil. Do make sure your name is on this because everyone's going to look the same, and you really want to make sure that you get credit for this work. Now I do wanna show you what this worksheet looks like when it is done. And you can see that we're essentially creating some value scales here between different colors. So if we take a look, we're gonna be mixing tints today, which is a color plus white. And you can see we're gonna start with white and we're gonna build up into that color. I chose red and I'm gonna use red today, but if you would like to choose a different color, feel free. Then we're gonna do our shades, which is a color plus black. So we're going to start with black and we're going to go to that color. Again, I chose red just to keep it consistent. You can choose any color you want. And then down here, we're going to do something um, a little different. We're going to mix complementary pairs. So as you know, if I bring my color wheel over, a complementary pair of colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. In this case, I'm going to stick with red and I'm going to use green as my complement. And we're going to mix those two together. We're going to see what that does to each color. Other complementary pairs that you are used to seeing are blue and orange and yellow and violet or purple. So if you wanted to use those two, that's fine. It'll work. Same thing with violet and yellow. The same thing will happen, but I'm going to use red and green. And it looks like on this worksheet, I did list it as red and green. Again, any other pair will work too. All right, so again, pause this video, get yourself set up, and let's get ready to paint. All right, so the good news with this whole situation is that it's pretty straightforward. We are really just creating that value scale, like I said. So we're going to start with white and your color. I'm going to choose red, like I said, and we're just going to paint in those two sections, and then we're going to slowly mix one to the other to create this value scale. Now, something that I want you to notice here is that there is a big difference between all these colors. If you're getting them too close together, I do want you to push them in either direction to really get this value scale. If you want to refer to the value scale in my room from a one to a five, but five being red, that helps really to see that. I also have this available in the room somewhere, so please go find it and compare as needed. All right, I'm going to take some white and some red on my palette. And I'm gonna do the whole thing right here live. I'm not gonna slow it down, I'm, or speed it up, excuse me. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna narrate what I'm thinking about while I'm doing this. But again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you should ha not have too much trouble understanding how to mix at this point. All right, so I got my palette paper. I'm gonna take some red. And I'm gonna take some white. I don't want too much, I can always take more. And now before I mix anything, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in my two colors. Now I'm gonna start with white, so I'm gonna load up my brush. I'm gonna drag that brush down into the paint. Yep, down to the paint. And I'm going to flip it over, dragging and pushing a little bit to try and load up those bristles. And I am going to paint in this box here for white. And at first you really can't tell the difference, but when it dries, you can see that it is painted. So take your time, paint that in white. Turn your paper if you need to. 
fold that whole box. You notice the point system at the bottom, um, giving you, I think, one point per box, right? So do be mindful that you're filling up the correct color. When I'm done, I'm going to wash my brush, pushing this down to the bottom of the cup and wiggling it around like we learned last time. Same thing here on the other side, peeking at it every now and again, seeing if there's any paint sort of stuck in my bristles. Takes a while sometimes. And then I'm gonna use my paper towel to sort of pull out the water from that. I don't ever wanna go from water to paint in this scenario. Sometimes we do that, but not just yet. And now I'm going to do the same thing for my red. I'm gonna drag down that color and I'm gonna paint this in. Now you might have noticed that acrylic paint dries super fast, especially in this classroom here because it's so warm in here while we're painting that heater goes nonstop, right? So it really absorbs into the paper quickly. And even just with the air, it dries pretty quick. So if you make a mistake, you need to paint over it. Just give it a minute to dry and then you can paint right over it again. I'm gonna add like two levels, layers <laughs> of paint here to get a nice solid red color. And then I'm gonna wash that brush. When you go and paint an actual painting, depending on what you're doing, you might not wash your brush as often as we are now. Um, between the color wheel and this one, we're gonna wash our brush in between every single color because we really want it to stay pure. That's what I'm grading you on, that you can make these colors, right? But once you start to paint, you might wanna have multiple colors on your brush at once. I know I like to paint like that. So it becomes a little bit less um, intense with the washing. All right, so now I have white to 100% of my color and I'm gonna build that in. Now here's the catch, or here's the thing you need to think about. When you start to mix these two, think about which color is more powerful in this pair. Sometimes it changes. In this case, the red is really gonna take over a lot. So I'm gonna take some white, I'm gonna put it over here and I'm gonna add little bits of red to get these tones working from light to dark. When I do this with black down here, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna have red, I'm gonna add little bits of black to it to change that color. You sort of gotta get used to your color and what it does and what it can't do. But I know from experience that this red is really intense and it's gonna do a lot of damage. So I'm gonna add little bits at a time. All right, so I'm gonna take most of my white and bring it down here. I always like to leave a little bit just in case I need it. And I'm gonna add just the tiniest amount of red. And I'm gonna see what happens and I can add more and more. So when I say tiniest amount, I mean it. I'm gonna like just tap in, do you see that? Just tap into my red and get like just a tiny bit. I wanna see what that amount does to this white. So I'm gonna lay that in. I'm gonna do this kind of cake decorating moment. Scrape it up, smush it down, wiggle it around. Look at that beautiful pink. Wiggle, wiggle, and then scoop it up and smush it down. Remember, we're not mixing like this, stirring. We're not stirring with either side. We are gathering and smushing. So you should see a really big difference in your um, speed when you mix in this way. You should be able to mix a whole color really quickly. All right, so that is definitely pink and I think it is the next one that comes here. If I take a look at my example, it's a little bit lighter than what I have there. Doesn't mean it's wrong. I'm just gonna add a tiny bit more to stay consistent with my examples. Let's see what we got. So I don't want it to be too much of a jump between these two, right? I want them to sort of have a good transition between color. There, that feels like a little bit more of a pink, let me see, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I think it does dry a little bit darker, so I am gonna use this. All right, so I'm going to pause for a second, grab my brush, load it up, 
and paint this square here. When I'm painting in this square, I'm moving my brush in multiple directions, turning my paper as I need to. All that good stuff that we learned in our last lesson. If you go outside the lines a little bit, it's okay. Try your best though to really stay in there. All right, I'm gonna use my brush like this. I'm gonna smush it out. I'm gonna bring it back to my water. Wash that brush, because I don't want it to uh, get into my next color, and I don't want it to dry on my brush. Pull out that color. And now I'm gonna gather up this paint again, and I'm gonna add a little bit more red. So I'm gonna tap in. I have too, way too much paint here. I'm gonna tap in just a little bit and add, swishing it around, picking it up. And that is the next color, but I want there to be a significant difference between all of them. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. Remember adding a little bit at a time really helps. It might be frustrating because you're like, I just wanna do it and get it done. but you don't know just how much it's gonna take. So add a little bit at a time. Look at that bubblegum pink. Now, there's always some paint on my knife that doesn't get in there, so I do like to really smush that out sometimes and gather that up. Sometimes that paint on the end of the knife can really be sneaky and catch you off guard. All right, let's take a look. This color looks like it would come next. Yep, right there. I think I'm going to go a little darker because I see that I'm going to go dark here. Um, and I want it to transition nicely, like I said. So although this does work, I would need like more steps to get to red, you know? So I'm going to grab a little bit more. I'm going to be a little brave. Really mix that up. Let's see. That's a little bit better. I might add just a tiny bit more. Okay, I love that. That's a great color. Okay, I'm gonna load up my brush, dragging this down, pushing it into my bristles and I'm going to paint this in here. Once you get the hang of this and you know what you're doing, this process is pretty relaxing and it does start to move a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. If I'm going too fast for you though, feel free to pause. So I'm going to do the very next color next, right? Pause until you get the right tone. Don't let me just keep talking at you. Okay, smush my brush off, wash my brush. And I'm gonna make this last color for my tint. Remember a tint is any color plus white. Now for this, I'm gonna be a little bit more brave. I'm gonna add quite a bit of red because it is my last step. And like I said before, we wanna see a significant change between them all. It's always good to compare, see where you're at. That is next, but I don't. I want it to be darker. See that? I want it to be a little bit darker. Now sometimes, like, so this took me a long time to learn, but I have a lot of paint here, and I'm gonna need to add a lot of red to this. If I wanted to speed up this process, I can put some of that pink over there and work with a smaller amount, especially because I only need this one square. I don't need to go crazy, right? So I can grab just a little bit more, and proportionately, it's gonna be quicker if I take some of that paint away. 
I'm a little embarrassed to say it took me a long time to learn that and especially honestly a lot of money because paint is expensive and in college at least or on your own you are buying your own paint so you don't want to waste too much you don't want so much of this color if you don't need it you know look at that that's a nice one I'm gonna go one more, just a little bit darker. And what's good about having that reserve over there, if I go too dark, I can add some of that lighter pink back in, right? Ooh, I think that's it, yeah. I don't know, what do you think? Looks good to me. Yeah, that's a good match. All right, so I'm going to use this paint here. I'm going to load up my brush and paint in my last tint to red. Okay, what do you think? White to a color, 100% of that color, which in this case is red. I've got a level two pink, level three pink, a level four pink, and then the five is that red. So there are my tints. We're gonna get ready to transition over to my shades. As you can see here, the definition of shade is a color plus black. So we're gonna go away from the white now. We're gonna use black and a color. You can switch it up and choose a different color. Instead of using red, you can use blue or yellow if you want. Um, you can even mix up a green <laughs> and use green. I'm gonna stick with red though, because it's convenient. All right, so you can see here that I went ahead and I got a new piece of palette paper. I got some black and some red and I painted in my red square. So go ahead and transition over if you need to. If you have more space on your palette paper, that's great. If I pull mine back over from before, you can see that I did have some space, but I didn't want, I don't know if you can see that. I did have some space, but I didn't want to get any of this black in there because then it's going to turn into a tone, like I was saying before, um, and we don't want that. So instead, I'm going to pick a new piece of palette paper. I grabbed the red from that one and brought it over here. I painted in just the red area, washed my brush, and now I'm going to load into the black and paint my square black as well. I'm sorry you didn't get to see me do that one square there. My camera cut out. I'm not sure what happens when it does that, but it's okay. Luckily it was just the red, right? Now when you wash this brush from the black paint, be really careful um, that you really get the paint out of the brush. We're going to build in from red to black in this case. In our last one, we went from white to red in this direction. This time we're going to work backwards. Um, and you want to make sure, I'm going to sort of swish that off and wash it over here. You want to make sure, we're going to work this way, because we're going to add little bits of black to the red. Before, the red was really powerful against the white. Now it's the opposite. The black is going to be very powerful and change this red really, really fast. Like I said earlier, I want to see a difference between every single one of these. If they all look the same, that means that you added um, too much, too fast, or you're not adding enough sometimes. So we do want to be mindful that we go slow. If we take a look at our example, we can see we've, we've got those two colors in. And we can see that immediately when you add black, this red is going to be a little bit quieter in tone. It's going to be a little darker in value. And then it gets more burgundy. And then here, this color, we really do want it to be, it's almost like a brownish kind of color, close to that black, okay? 
You can see a similarity between this stuff and this here. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. All right, so I'm going to, where's my knife? I'm gonna grab a, almost all of that red, not all of it because I wanna add, well, if I need it, I wanna add a little bit back. Um, I'm gonna grab a lot of that red here and then I'm gonna tap into this black and when I say tap, I really mean it. Like, look at that, it's barely anything, right? And I'm gonna put it down in here and mix it up. You do want to see a color change, so if you didn't add enough, if you're a little too careful, um, make sure you grab some more. I can see a little color change there, but I want to be a little bit more dramatic. Grab a little bit more. The biggest problem I see is students either taking too much paint right away or not enough. All right, look at that color. Do you see how it took that red and it sort of muted it down? All right, there it is. So that has just a tiny bit of black. I'm gonna load up that brush and paint in the square here. So black is always going to darken the value of your color. And it's really nice for creating really deep dark colors right away. Down here when we talk about complementary pairs, that's going to be like a black paint substitution. And if you can understand this conversation, the complementary pair conversation, and start to use that in your painting practice, it really is a game changer. It uh, gives a lot of life to your painting. So we'll talk more in a second, but Black is really nice to go quickly nice and dark, but we often avoid it, excuse me, we often avoid it in my class because we sub in the complementary pair. That looks great. I'm gonna leave a little of this off to the side because I wanna add a second layer of that color. Wash in my brush. I'm gonna take some of this and put it over there because I don't like how streaky that is. And I'm gonna add that in a few minutes. Um, but now I'm going to add, I'm going to go to the next one here. I'm going to add a little bit more, maybe a tiny bit more than that. Little bits at a time. Uh-oh. I got dark fast, didn't it? Uh-oh, it's right. Sometimes I think this is the hardest one because it really does change really quickly. Is that a darker color? Yes. Is it the next shade? I guess so, right? Because I think I can go darker with it. So I think that might be okay. It was a little startling just now. I was like, uh-oh. Yeah, that looks nice. So it's still red. Just darker. paint I'm using is a little bit thin, so that's why you can see that streakiness sometimes. If you wait and add another layer, it works. It's a little thicker. Um, or if you just apply the paint a little bit thicker than normal. Sort of tapping it on. Looks good. I'm going to do this with my brush. Pull that off and grab some of my other paint to add that second coat along here. But I don't want to get any of that darker color in there, so be careful. Okay, washing the brush again. Oops, I got some paint on it. And now let's go for this one here between the black and that last color. What do I need to do? Add some more black. I'm going to be a drama queen though. I'm going to grab more than I have before. I'm going to go for it because I, I want that red to still 
speak through the color, but I want it to be really dark. Look at that. It almost looks black, but if you look close, it's got that like burgundy undertone, right? Well, let me check it. If I do this, take some of that. That looks like a next good step. Looks good there. I could push this even more, but I think that's what I want to stick with today. I'm going to grab that paint. Yeah. And paint that. It almost has a purpley tone to it. Do you see that? Oftentimes, black pigments lean towards a color on the color wheel. Maybe this one leans purple. I don't know. I have to check. Maybe it leans blue and that's why this looks purple. That could be it. Oftentimes a black will lean blue. You'll see it in hair dye a lot of time. People dye their hair black, but it's got like a blue tint to it. Doesn't always look natural, which could be cool, right? But not if you're going for like a natural black. All right, what do you think? Looks good, right? So those are our shades. A shade is a color plus black. If I took this and I turned it and put it on the end here, we could go from white to black with red in the middle. That would be kind of cool. Um, but I wanted to split this up so you can see the difference. All right. Remember, if you are watching this in my classroom, you might need to pause between class periods. Um, usually this takes about one class period and, and then this one is a little bit more depending on how long the video is and how much you get through. Remember to pause where you need to. And I'm going to do some cleaning because I'm going to switch over to the complementary pair and for that it does take a little longer because I'm going to go from red to green. Take a look from red to green. And I need to mix green because I don't have green. I've got red, yellow, and blue. And so how do you make green? You mix yellow and blue. So I need to clean this up a little bit, get myself reorganized, maybe grab some more paper towels, mix up a green, and then I can start this transition. If I wanted to and I have some red, which I do, I'm going to go ahead right now and paint this corner red. That's a good idea before I totally clean this up. Always look ahead a little bit, right? Get to some solid red, and then we'll go ahead and mix up that green. All right, I'm gonna do a little cleaning. I'm gonna get some new water and then we'll keep going with our complimentary right pair. All right, so I'm back with some clean water. I have my brush, my knife, and I took a new piece of palette paper and I have some blue and some yellow to create my green to tackle this complimentary right pair. To remind you, a complimentary right pair is um, a pair of colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. And when they are mixed, they bring down the intensity of those colors and or they turn gray slash brown. So if we take a look at our color wheel, we're using red and green and they're directly across from each other on the color wheel. The other two pairs that we're most um, commonly talking about are blue and orange and violet and yellow. Although red, violet and yellow, green are complements too. It's literally right across. And what happens when you mix these two is that you're there's two things that you want to think about. You're actually mixing all three primaries, right? So if you mix red with green, to make green you use blue and yellow. So you're really just mixing all three primaries and you're getting sort of this muddy brown kind of color. Depending on your pigments, you might even get to black, which is really cool. Same thing happens with blue and orange, because to make orange you have yellow and red. Same thing happens with yellow and violet because you have yellow mixing with violet. Violet is blue and red too. All right, so it's really kind of cool. If you take a look at the example, when you mix them together, it brings down the intensity. So to get this burgundy red, we have the same kind of color here like black, 
or we can add green. So it creates, goes from like a really bright, shining, happy red to this quieter, less intense red here, which we call burgundy. Same thing over here. If I have a bright, happy, fun green and I add a little red to it, it's going to throw back the intensity. It's going to make it more muted. And you have this like more hunter olivey kind of green here instead of that bright, happy green. So this is a substitution. Instead of adding black, you can add the complement to take down the intensity. Now, if you look in the middle, this one is not, this color here is sort of that brown gray kind of color, and it's not leaning towards one or the other. It's not really a green kind of color. It's not really a red kind of color. It's right in the middle. And this is the hardest one to get. So we're gonna work a little hard to get that together, but it should be fine. I've already gone ahead and painted my red. I need to mix my green now and paint my green, and then we can start to mix those together. If you take a look at my color wheel, I really do want you to get green. I don't want a blue green. I don't want a yellow green because otherwise our middle color here is gonna be orangey or more um, purple, and I don't want that. So I know that the blue is more intense than the yellow. So I'm gonna take some yellow over here. I'm gonna grab some blue, less blue than the yellow. And I'm gonna mix it up. I will need a lot of this color. So maybe I'll add a couple more. Mix up a green and then compare it against your color wheel that you have. You should have it in your folder and see if it's that middle green. I just added a little bit more blue because it was feeling a little too bright. I want this middle green. Check it out. Yeah, there it is, right? So here is my middle green. Make sure you get it. Don't just jump in with a yellow green or a blue green. Paint in this square. And then we're gonna start to mix our colors that we have here. This is the hardest part of this worksheet, but honestly, I think it's the most valuable piece of information. Once you understand this and adopt it into your painting practice, like I was saying a few minutes ago, this is a game changer. It really changes how you understand color and how you use color in your paintings and in other artwork, and even how you dress, right? Thinking about color relationships. All right, guess what? I'm washing my brush. I took way too much blue and yellow, didn't I? I don't know. And I'm going to pull out that paint from my knife. Well, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> I'm gonna scrape up this green. This is my green reserve. I need this for the rest of here. So I'm gonna take some of it, not all of it, just a little bit of it. I'm gonna bring it somewhere else, keep it in a little reserve. And now I need to add, I'm gonna do this one next. I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of red. So I'm gonna take some red, haven't done this yet. I need to add some to my palette. I'm gonna take literally the tiniest bit, like we were doing black before, tiny, tiny bit. And I'm gonna add this to my green, mix that up, and immediately you see that green start to shift, start to change. And it mutes that down. Do you see the difference between those two colors? It mutes that down, creates a duller, less intense green. And there is that color that goes right here. If I take a look, there it is. This one has a little bit more in it. That's okay. I'm looking for it to be muted, muted green. I should be able to see a difference between these two. I don't know if my difference is enough, to be honest, but I already started painting, so. Let's see. Is it enough of a difference? Yeah, maybe I'll add a tiny bit more. I wanna be perfect, you know? A little bit more. Layer some of that on top. I don't know if it'll make a difference. No. <laughs> I tried. 
Okay, now that I have that color, I'm gonna do the same thing to my red. I need another piece of palette paper. Pull this over because I want it to stay clean. I should really wash this brush. my knife. I'm going to take some of this red over here and I'm going to go back to my original green and I'm going to add just a touch of this green to this red. Look at the proportions of that. And I'm going to mix that up. You might need to add a little bit more, but you always start with a little. Oh, I'm going to need to add a little bit more. I'm going to grab some of that more of that green. And you should see that red color is going to start to mute and be a little bit less intense, right? It very much matches that color, doesn't it? But no black, just green. Taking my brush, loading it up, and painting that in. Give me the last color. I was a little shy. I should have gone a little darker with both of these, but that's okay. I'm saying that because I'm looking at this one. Do you see how much darker those are? So if you're doing this with me, maybe you want to go a little bit darker. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. I gotta slow down, I'm getting too excited. All right, wash that brush. And now we're gonna go for this color here. And for this color, you would think you need equal parts red and green, but this red is gonna be a little bit more powerful, I think, I think. So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna take what I got here, might as well use that. And I'm gonna add this green that I had before. You know, I'm gonna take some of this away because I think it's not proportionally enough. And I'm gonna add those together. It's gonna to lean towards the red, I knew it. I'm gonna take some of that away. I'm gonna add just the tiny, see that tiny bit of red I got? And I'm gonna go back to my original green and add that in, Let's see if I can get to that brown. There it is, you see it? Yours is leaning towards a color. If it's looking a little blue or a little yellow or a little red, that means that it has too much of that primary in it. If it's feeling too orange, that means it has too much red or yellow in it. But look at that, do you see that brown? Yeah, that brown goes right in the middle. Isn't that wild? And that's though how you make brown from all three primaries. We'll talk about this when we talk about skin tone. Skin tone is just all three primaries in different combinations and with white, right? So more white or less white, depending on how light or dark your skin is. It took me a long time to figure that out. Doesn't make sense to put blue in your skin at first, you know, because we're not blue. But you need that blue to mute the other colors. Beautiful. All right, one point per box, right? I'm looking for those right colors. Don't worry if you make a little mistake like that. This is what I'm looking for. All right, so I hope you enjoyed working with me here. Whoops. <laughs> mixing tints, shades, and complementary pairs. In our next lesson, we are going to be learning about painting techniques, like wet on wet, wet on dry. But at this point, you should feel pretty confident, if I pull this over, you should feel pretty confident with both your color wheel, your tints, shades, and complementary pairs, and physically how to mix your paint. All right, guys, thanks for painting with me, and I will see you next time.